Should flat-faced dogs be banned? Many will suffer with serious breathing problems. Flat-faced dogs like pugs, French bulldogs and the like are becoming more and more common and unfortunately more dogs are suffering health problems because of this. Is hashtag breed to breathe realistic? And do vets really want to ban pugs, French bulldogs and other flat-nosed dogs? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Alex from ourpetshealth.com, helping you and your pet to live healthier, happier lives. So let me know your experience below and thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'll discuss why I think a ban of these breeds is a bad idea in a minute. I also know that not all dogs suffer from these problems and other breeds have serious issues too, all of which I'll discuss. But first, let's jump into the issues. Flat-faced dogs like pugs, bulldogs, and French bulldogs are grouped together and known as brachycephalic, which simply means short-nosed. Now they are fantastic characters. They are loyal, fun-loving and make excellent companions. They're generally light in the mood in the consult room, so if anyone accuses me, or to be honest most other vets, as being against these flat-nosed breeds, they couldn't really be further from the truth. The problem is we are seeing these flat-faced dogs more and more in our consult rooms across the world, and as a result we're seeing more and more of the problems many of them suffer from. Now the problems are many and are very much a man-made breeding issue. We have just selected for shorter and shorter noses, but at the same time, the amount of soft, soft tissue, that skin and tissue within the mouth has pretty much remained the same. Now, this leaves a huge amount of tissue crammed into a really tiny head. So the nostrils have become really narrow, which makes it very hard for them to actually draw air through their noses. As the air goes through their nose, the amount of tissue here is also magnified, again, increasing the resistance to airflow. The next problems that make breathing hard, whether these dogs breathe through their nose or their mouth, is their soft palate and tongue. The soft palate is the flappy bit of tissue at the back of the throat. Now when it is longer than normal, it flaps around, it narrows the airway, and this is what you're hearing when your dog is sniffling, snorting, or snoring. You're hearing the effort that these dogs are having to make to force air past this partial obstruction right at the back of their throat. So you might think that the noises a lot of our flat-faced dogs make are cute, but in reality, they are an audible indicator that they are not breathing freely. Even when the air manages to be forced through the small nostrils and narrow nasal passages and past the soft palate obstruction, it then has to contend with the trachea or windpipe. And guess what? This is more narrow than normal too. The increased effort needed just to breathe through these narrow airways then makes the larynx or the voice box become swollen. And guess what this does? Yep it makes the airway more narrow again and breathing just that much harder. To make matters even worse, there is currently a serious obesity epidemic in our pet dog and cat population that I've spoken about many times before. And any excess fat is just gonna increase our flat-faced dog's problems by further narrowing their airways. Now, not every flat-faced dog is gonna be affected and not every flat-nosed dog who does suffer with some problems will be affected to the same degree. It is though a significant problem and if you hear one of these brachycephalic dogs snuffling, if they're snorting or if they're snoring, then you can be pretty certain that there is a problem. No matter how cute you think the sound is, just because it has become normal for these breeds does not mean that it's okay. So, just how many dogs are affected? Well, in one study done at the University of Cambridge, 93% of pugs were affected to some degree or other, 90% of French Bulldogs and 85% of Bulldogs are also suffering to some degree. Now that's an awful lot, and even if you think that that is a gross exaggeration, it's still gonna end up being an awful lot of dogs, especially when you then combine it with the statistic that up to 58% of flat-nosed dogs seen by vets with breathing problems are not recognized as having breathing issues by their owners. It is so prevalent that we just think that it is normal. Not being able to breathe properly is not normal. Now, if you're still not convinced, pinch your nose and try breathing through a straw for any length of time while being active. You won't last long and will soon need to rest. And it's for this very reason that many flat-faced dog breeds are considered quiet or calm. If they get excited or try to run around too much, they very quickly reach a stage when they simply cannot get enough oxygen into their lungs. Now, this is a massive issue considering that they are such enthusiastic, friendly individuals. And that's not all, of course. These breathing problems can make flat-nosed dogs more prone to heat stroke. Some breeds can also have problems with deformed spines um, and that affects their, their spine and their nerves. And many will suffer from skin infections because of the deep skin folds. Their hearts often struggle from the lack of oxygen the breathing problems cause. 
Their teeth can be very crowded and dental disease is very common and it's very common in, in most small breed dogs anyway. They're also more prone to eye issues because they're just much more prominent and vulnerable to injury. And perhaps finally, they also sometimes struggle to give birth. Their large heads mean that many require elective caesarean sections. So we are breeding dogs that can't breathe properly and many can't even give birth without surgery. Now that's enough of the potential problems and I'll leave a couple of links down below that discuss them in more details. Now, of course, hearing that your dog may be really likely to suffer from these conditions is very upsetting. And a frequent reaction is then to point out that there are lots of other breeds that commonly suffer from hereditary genetic conditions too. So why are we just picking on these flat nosed breeds? You know, we're just picking on them, we're just ganging up. Now, I'll be the first to admit that yes, many breeds do have conditions that they are more prone to and suffer from with an upsetting regularity. Now, I also believe that these issues are just as important to fix and some of the strategies that I'll discuss in a minute will be just as helpful for any breed trying to rectify the problems that us humans have created through selective breeding. Now, some examples of this might be Westies with skin allergies, it might be Labradors with their hips and knees, Dachshunds with their massively prevalent spinal disease, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and their hearts and their skulls. The list is a long one. And I think there are four reasons why our pugs and our French Bulldogs, among others, are currently being singled out. The first is that they're rapidly gaining in popularity. The second, that many people are unaware of the issues their new dogs are likely to face. The third is that airway problems, it can affect actually very young dogs. And the fourth is that surgery is the only thing that may improve things. And this is not without significant expense and risk in some cases. There is just no effective medical treatment. So what can we do to help these awesome dogs be even more awesome and free from disease? After all, that must be the goal of everyone, surely. Well, one thing that has gained a lot of press recently is a call to ban the breeds that are affected. Now, this is not what the recent hashtag breed to breed campaign is all about, but there have definitely been some petitions calling on the complete banning of the entirety of these breeds. Will this work? Well, in my opinion, absolutely not. Unscrupulous breeders will always find a way to get around any legislation, creating crossbreeds, um, formulating new breeds, under the table sales, but the fact that it wouldn't work doesn't in itself make banning entire breeds the wrong thing to do. Instead, passing any such legislation will alienate a huge proportion of the dog-owning population who have fallen, understandably fallen in love with the fantastic characters of these dogs. It will put people off seeking help for those dogs already with us and suffering health issues for risk of being judged and made to feel embarrassed or ridiculed. It also won't help the new designer breeds and crosses which will come along and take their place, undoubtedly with exactly the same characteristics and problems. There always seems to be loopholes with any legislation and this will definitely happen. In banning these breeds, we'll also lose so many of the desirable traits that they have. And there is another way, I believe. So then, what is the alternative to banning flat-faced dog breeds? Well, the way I see it, there needs to be a four-pronged attack. And this could definitely reverse the current worrying health trend that we see and improve the lives of millions of dogs. Now, it could also be used as a template for other breeds with genetic issues that could have far-reaching implications in improving the health of the dog population as a whole. So educate, educate, educate is my first step. I've already said that over half of flat-faced dog owners do not consider that individually their dog has a breathing problem, even when it is present. Now this is not surprising and it's not a judgment at all. It's a very similar figure in fact to owners of overweight pets as you can read about in a video that I'll put up here. When we become used to something being present, we just start to accept it as normal. A dog who is making noise while they are breathing, especially when they're not exercising heavily, is not normal. And the more that this message is spread by vets, by dog trainers and all dog enthusiasts, the more dogs can be helped to live active, easy breathing lives that they deserve. The role of obesity also needs to be made very clear. Now this is something that is readily treatable with a good weight loss program and support. It does not need surgery, it doesn't need expensive treatment and either losing weight for the obese or maintaining a healthy weight for those that are already at that point may be the difference between a dog who can exercise freely and one who can hardly breathe at a trot. It really is that important and obesity and its role should not be underestimated. On another note then, 
The more prospective puppy owners who know what to look out for, the higher demand there'll be for individuals who are less likely to suffer from the genetic problems that can seriously impact not only on the quality of life, but on the life expectancy of these breeds. And this brings us nicely to my next suggestion, and that's breed standards. Now, the vast majority of dogs, they never go near a show ring and they're never judged at anything more serious than a school pet day or a summer fete and have nothing to do with organisations like the Kennel Club. The best breeders though are often, although not always, Kennel Club registered or associated with some form of club. And there are definitely some advantages to choosing a breeder who is registered with these, especially if you do not know a breeder from personal or from professional recommendations. And that's something I've discussed as well in how to buy a healthy puppy. It is the Kennel Club though who decide what each breed should look like. And that's known simply as the breed standard. And the simple act of encouraging a nose to be bred back into the breed will highlight the vital importance of this among breeders. It will also generate a lot of publicity and any photos of winning dogs um, will show a dog with a longer nose. And if we become more used to seeing individuals like this, then hopefully our definition of normal will also change. It wouldn't hurt either to get a few high profile pug or French bulldog lovers just to help publicize the changes and to help encourage people to look responsibly for breeders that breed healthy puppies when they're thinking of getting a puppy themselves. The impact of celebrity endorsement, it should not be underestimated. And again, I've discussed this in a video I'll link up here. But how do you know if a breeder is responsible? Well, that brings us on to health schemes. And it's where clear evidence-based health schemes can come into play. An excellent work done by the BOAS group at the University of Cambridge, and I'll put some links down in the description below. It shows us that it is possible to take a few simple measurements and from these predict which dogs are more likely to suffer from breathing issues and which individuals are more likely to be free from disease. If we breed from two lower risk dogs, then their puppies are also likely to be at a much lower risk of developing these breathing genetic problems. It won't then take many generations to get noses back on our flat-faced dogs and breed them back to health, the population as a whole will be much healthier as a result. But what about those breeders who choose not to be part of the health scheme? Well, backyard breeders and puppy mills will find hopefully that their potential customers will now be much better advised and informed and they'll find that the demand for the puppies that they produce, it will just dry up. And make sure you check out my related video if you don't know why puppy mills are bad and why you shouldn't buy from a pet shop, why you shouldn't buy a puppy from a pet shop. Again, I'll just link that up here in the card. Now, breeder controls are the logical next step. So to further help combat rogue breeders, we just need strict controls. The simple licensing of breeders that we currently have generally, it simply gives them the right to sell puppies as a business. It, does little to ensure that the breeding conditions are really appropriate for raising healthy, well-socialized puppies, let alone the welfare of, of the mums and dads of these puppies, which is some, in some cases it's just heartbreaking. Now, poor puppy breeders will always fly under the radar, exploiting the dogs that they breed, the puppies that they produce, and the people who buy or mistakenly rescue them. Making this harder through regular inspections of known puppy breeders, combined with tough and meaningful prosecutions of those who continue to produce puppies in poor conditions or produce unhealthy puppies of any breed, it can only be a good thing for the whole of the dog population. Now, everyone who's been involved in the debates about banning versus appropriate breeding and the like want the same thing and we mustn't lose sight of that. We all want happy, healthy dogs. To say that all dogs of one breed will have health problems is not accurate, but equally, just because some people perceive that their dog is completely healthy does not mean that there is not a problem. The evidence, unfortunately, confirms and points to the fact that there clearly are significant issues. By having an us versus them situation, there is a real risk of alienating the owners of the very dogs that need help. And the last thing we want is owners of Brachycephalics or for any other breed in the future with issues to stop seeking help for any health issues because of fear of judgment or embarrassment or ridicule uh, and failing to, to take really sound advice. Let's instead all work together, veterinarians, kennel clubs, breeders and breed enthusiasts. Let's educate and support, not alienate, dog owners and potential owners of breeds affected with these health issues or any other issues in the future. Let's teach them how they can give these dogs the air they need to live the life they deserve. So, what do you think? What is the best way to improve the health of our flat-faced dogs or any other breed for that matter? 
Do you even think there's a health issue that needs solving? I'd love to read your thoughts and comments down below. Also, to remember to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.